Hi everyone! So this look was requested by anyone who wanted to see a hooded eye tutorial. This is a this is a fun tutorial that can show you how to make your eyes appear a little bit bigger. Um, I will be following the shape, obviously, of my own eye, but giving a few tips um, uh, for those who do have uh, hooded eyes to help make the eye appear um, bold but still look like your own eye shape because all eye shapes are beautiful and everyone's got their own eye shape. So here is my tutorial for almond or hooded eyes using the sleek sunset palette that was sent to me by Crazy uh, Diamond. I'll put a link to her YouTube in the description bar. She's a really sweet lovely lady from the UK and thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoy this okay, tutorial. So to get started I'm going to prep and prime my eyelids with the e.l.f. Studio Eye Primer. They have a sealer side and a, and a primer side. I'm just going to take the primer side which looks like a flesh tone chapstick or lipstick and I'm just going to pat little dots of that all over. There's already concealer under my brow bone just to heighten the arch and perfect any areas that may have been under plucked or over plucked and if there's any redness because of that, I'm just going to prime. And because I put a little bit of liner and shadow underneath my eye, I'm going to take the Sleek Makeup Palette, and this is in Sunset. It has all these lovely colors, basically all browns for the most part, with the exception of this gorgeous blue, and then of course a black, but I like that most palettes contain some sort of a dark color like that. I'm just going to be taking this sort of crease brush that's labeled as a highlighter brush. For the lid, I'm going to go in with this sort of tan color right here. I'm just going to dab our brush into there. And I'm just going to plop that on the lid. Sort of brush it through. Now for the crease, I'm only going to go one shade up from that shade using this shade right over here towards the center. And it's literally just a little bit more yellow toned. And I'm going to start in the outer corner. Get the majority of that color into the outer corner. By keeping everything light and shimmery, I am opening up the eye by quite a bit. So you, if you have um, true almond eyes, or hooded eyes, or smaller eyes, this sort of technique will definitely help keep your eyes beautiful and big. I'm going up a little bit in the outer corner just so that the eye looks like it's going up. Uh, versus going down. Now to add further depth, just because most looks do anyways, and anybody can do it with any eye shape that um, they have, I'm just going to go in and do that because nobody needs to minimize down to two colors just because they have smaller or hooded eyes. So I'm going to go in with a slightly even darker shade. This one's more reddish, obviously. Kind of like Max Coppering. And we're going to start in the outer corner again. Now you can do this um, this look with any uh, eyeshadows, any colors. Just so, trying to go by like a technique. These are all sort of shimmery, mineral-based shadows. Nothing too matte or harsh because matte shades can make the eye look smaller. Not to say that you can't use matte shades, but going in and using something with light reflective properties does make things look now, bigger. Some people do like to avoid using too much black or brown in their eye looks, particularly if they have smaller eyes. So we're just going to use this particular shade. It's just a soft mineral brown with a red undertone. Getting my brush in there. And we're just going to sweep a little bit of that delicately so into the outer V. This will make the eye look cat-like and sultry. Now I'm going to use Max eyeshadow in Orb right here, this peachy soft color. Just because I have so many dark colors on my other blender, I'm just taking out a new one. I know some people hate seeing people use almost the one eyeshadow brush on almost the entire eye. It's possible. 
kind of if you don't if you like to switch your eye brushes more often that's cool too now obviously I followed the eyeshadows to the shape of my own eye if you go too low you can actually cut off um, the size of your eye so make sure that you do coat the entire lid with shadows and follow your exact crease trying to stay too low once again could cut off your eye so just my little tip. Um, also I'm going to now take Max Chromographic Pencil and this is in NW25 NC30. It's close to my skin tone in the summertime. Now for the lower lash line I'm going to use a little bit more of Max Orb and this there's a look alike in the Vanity Palette as well so if you want to take that that's also good. And I'm just going to take a black eyeliner. If you'd like, you can take a brown, but honestly, I don't think that the color is going to matter so much as your technique. Okay, because I got a little bit of that lower than I like. That's why I never do foundation first. Now some people do like to draw it up and do a little cat eye. What I would say is just follow your outer tear duct and wing it up gently. I wouldn't go too far out, so just go with whatever you're comfortable with. Now mascara always makes eyes appear bigger and bolder and more awake, so it is really really is like a holy grail item. I'm going to be using the Physicians Formula Organic Wear Jumbo Lash Mascara in Black Organics. Looks like this. This crazy sucker. This is the other one, the non-jumbo lash. I think those look a little crazy, but this one's got um, kind of like the CoverGirl type wand. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that on. I also hit the lower lash line with some mascara as well, getting pretty into the root. So here is the after with mascara and the before. So I think the eye definitely has a more sexy flare. So my tinted moisturizer and face powder are now on. Now I'm going to take a little bit of Max Blunt, which is just the only bronzer I have at this time. It's just a soft matte brown. Put that on and delicately contour. I do bring it up a bit so it does have a natural tan effect and not just a strip of color on the cheek. To go down the nose bridge and I also like to go through the center of the forehead as well because I feel that having just a spot of like highlight through the center of the forehead gives the gives like the illusion that the contour is completely fake because it looks like it's striped on, but that's my opinion. And now I'm going to take Elf's Blush in Candid Coral, and these are packaged very much like NARS, obviously. They even have this little insert inside, which NARS does, a little plastic insert, just like NARS. And this is Candid Coral. This shade to me does remind me a lot of a, ver of a certain MAC color. It reminds me of Margin. There's Mar Margin by MAC. There's Elf's Candid Coral. There's them swatched on my fingers. There's a difference on my fingers. There's even a difference on my hand. The orangier one is by MAC. But blended out, they're harmonious. So, that's the true ultimate test, I think, is blending them out, because you wouldn't wear it swatched on your cheek. So I'm going to take a little bit of Elf's Candid Coral. I'm going to take Elf's Matte Lip Color in Coral. Wet n Wild Lipstick in 903C. These are just the Mega Stays. This was my dupe from my Quite Cute Collection series for Plain Koi. And, um, midway through the lipstick they start getting a little bit easier to apply. Elf's Liquid Lipstick in Baby Lips. Urban Decay's All Nighter Spray. Even though it's not night at all. Thanks for your time.